the challenge that's ahead of us is uh, to send this fantastic timepiece here, the Seiko Astron, high above the Earth to capture the blackness of space, the, the thin blue line of the atmosphere and the, the curvature of the Earth. The Armstrong line is the, the commonly accepted gateway to near space. That's at about 19 kilometers. And this is the point at which you would need a pressurized spacesuit to survive or, or your blood would boil in your body. We're going to be looking to try and attempt to get around twice that if we can. There are loads of reasons to be really excited about this project. It's on space exploration day for a start, but particularly for us, we're going to be trying to break our own records of how high we can get. It's also a great opportunity for people to get involved help us hunt down this watch that's been right up to the edge of space and if you find it you get to keep it. When the balloon first bursts there's very little atmosphere there to oppose the parachute so this thing will be falling at more than 200 miles an hour in this case. We're going to experience temperature extremes as low as minus 60 degrees so this thing is going to go on quite a journey. This is our primary tracking system so this is uh, picking up GPS uh, signal We'll feed that information back to Jura Watches, um, who can then relay the information uh, to give clues as to where you might want to head. We've known payloads to travel hundreds of, uh, of miles. We have had cases where uh, we've launched a payload that has gone considerable distance, but also come back on itself and essentially landed not far away from where we launched it from. So there really is quite a lot of variance.